In parts 1 and 2 of this presentation, we investigated a definite integral from 0 to 2 pi, involving an integrand with a linear function of the cosine on the bottom. I now want to look at one with a sine. The principles are the same, but the algebra is just very slightly different because of the extra j's that will be around. I've chosen this function, 1 over negative 3 plus 2 sine theta. a is negative 3, b is 2, and the absolute value of a is greater than the absolute value of b. That means that the integral is well defined. There should be no problems with infinities, and we ought to be able to find a value. We'll go about this integral in exactly the same way as usual. We'll let z equal e to the j theta. So dz is j e to the j theta d theta, which is the same as jz d theta. And therefore, d theta can be replaced with negative j over z dz. Now up until now we've been dealing with cos, but now we've got sine. We need the Euler result for sine. It's 1 over 2j e to the j theta minus e to the negative j theta, which in turn is 1 over 2j z minus 1 on z. So a little bit different to the cos, especially because of the presence of the j there. It's not going to hurt us though. Our integral will just transform as usual to the contour integral around mod z equals 1. There'll be our usual minus j at the front and 1 over z inside as usual dz, and then there'll be 1 over, remember it was negative 3 plus 2 sine theta. So it's negative 3 plus, now where's sine theta? There it is. 2 times sine theta will cancel the half. That will leave just 1 over j into z minus 1 on z. So far, so good. Let's expand out the denominator, multiplying the z by everything next to it in the other quotient. So that will become negative j, still at the front, contour integral, mod z equals 1, 1 over negative 3z, plus 1 over jz squared, minus 1 over j and z times 1 over z is 1, dz. That's a little bit messy, really, isn't it? I don't like 1 over jz squared. Let's multiply top and bottom by j. When we do that on the top, we've got the minus j outside multiplied by an extra j on top. That just makes plus 1. Yeah, negative j times j is 1. So we'll get the integral on mod z equals 1, 1 over, and we've still got to multiply by the j on the bottom. If we reorder the terms to have the z squared term first, 1 over j z squared multiplied by j will just give z squared. The z term will become minus 3jz, and minus 1 over j times j will become minus 1. No problem yet. We need to find the poles for the function 1 over z squared minus 3jz minus 1. I'm not worried that the coefficient of z there is imaginary. We can still use the quadratic formula. So we set z squared minus 3jz minus 1 equals 0. And so z is 3j plus or minus square root of negative 3j all squared minus 4 times minus 1 all over 2. 
that simplifies to 3 over 2j plus or minus and in the square root we've got negative 9 plus 4 all still over 2 which is 3 halves j plus or minus root 5 over 2j so these poles are in purely imaginary positions in fact the position is 3 halves plus or minus root 5 over 2 times j do you remember when we had cosines in the denominator the poles were always along the real axis either inside or outside the circle well this time with sines they're along the imaginary axis inside or outside the circle at this stage we need to investigate the size of those poles let's look at 3 halves plus root 5 over 2 root 5 well what's that very roughly 2 and a quarter say so let's say that's round about 5 and a quarter over 2 which is certainly bigger than let's not write equals let's write certainly greater than 2.5 so that pole is well outside our unit circle. Let's draw the unit circle. One, one, negative j, j. And that first pole is way up here on the imaginary axis at three halves plus root five over two j. Now what about the other one? 3 halves minus root 5 over 2. You can work it out exactly on a calculator if you like, but I reckon it's a half 3 minus root 5. And if we could say root 5 is very approximately 2 and a quarter, actually it's a little bit smaller. Let's say a half into 3 minus 2 and a quarter. That's certainly something like a half times three quarters which is three eighths so our second pole is going to be here inside the circle only three eighths of the way up the imaginary axis so that's three halves minus root five over two j so for part four of the presentation we are required to find the residue of our function f of z that was 1 over z squared minus 3jz minus 1 at the position 3 minus root 5 over 2j We'll do that in part four.